Swift provides a special result type that allows us to encapsulate both a successful value, but also some kind of error, both in the same piece of data. So in the same way that an optional might have a string, for example, or might have nothing at all, a result might have a string or might have an error. One of those two will be true. The syntax results, when you first see it, it's a bit strange at first, but you get the hang of it pretty quickly. To show us off, we could write some code that downloads some data from a server. We could say, uh, at state, private var output is an empty string. We'll show that inside our text view here. And then add, add a task to it, saying await fetch readings. And this thing will be a new method, fetch readings async. And here, we're going to use our original non-result based networking code. So we'll say, start a do block, make a URL using the string HTTPS code slash slash hws.dev slash readings.json slash readings.json. Then let data underscore equals try await URL session dot share dot data from that URL. Then get our readings using JSON decoder. Decoding as uh, an array of double from that data. Then set the output string to be found, found readings.count readings. So fairly straightforward. And if any part of that goes wrong, we'll just catch the error and print download error. And that code should work fine when it runs. You can press command R if you want to, it's not too exciting, but it should print out 10,000 readings or whatever when it finally runs. Um, and the code works fine, right, hopefully but it doesn't give us a lot of flexibility in the way it works, the way it's structured. What if we want to stash that work, there we are. What if we want to stash that work away while some other work happens? Uh, what if we want to uh, read its result at some point in the future, or perhaps handle errors somewhere else entirely? Or what if we want to say, actually, uh, no, I, I don't need the work anymore, just cancel it. We can get that all by using uh, result. And this provides a, a more information around a previous API I've used called task. Uh, and these two combine together quite beautifully. So we could say our, our current code is actually part of a task. We'll say let fetch task be a new task that takes no values and returns a string like that. And we'll go ahead and do our, our URL and data and readings Rather than set the string directly, we'll return it here from our task. And I'll go ahead and delete this catch block entirely. Now we've used task before to launch pieces of work in the background or foreground, but here we've given our task a name. This thing is now called fetch task. And that already gives us the flexibility to pass task around while it's still working, uh, return it from somewhere else to use it in the core site, uh, cancel it if needed. You can just call uh, fetch task dot cancel, for example. <clears throat> but notice how our task returns a value now. That value gets stashed away in the task instance. So we can read it in the future at some point. And more importantly, this task might have thrown errors from these two lines of code. They're both saying this might throw errors. And so our task, uh, if it has succeeded, will contain return uh, found 10,000 readings, but it might also contain an error. And this is where result comes in because the result holds those two together. It's very, very similar to optionals. It's either A or B. It's either there or not there for optional. It's either a string message or it's a, error from our download or decode in the error case. And to read that result out, we just say, let result equals await fetch task dot result, like that. Now notice how we have to use await because it might not finish its work yet. So we have to go to wait for the result to come in, but we haven't had to use try to read the result. That's because this result value holds the error inside itself. 
an error might have been thrown. But we haven't got to worry about it just yet, unless we want to. We can now pass that result around. Return it from here, put it somewhere else, stash it away, pass it to a function, who knows what. And there's no more asynchronous attached to it anymore. There's no more awaiting. Now it's awaited once, it's good to pass around like a regular result value. And if you look at what it is, if you look at the result here, you'll see it's a result with string as its success case and an error, maybe, if it's gone wrong. Um, that we've got to handle very, very carefully. Now, you can, if you want to, read that successful value directly from the result. But you've got to make sure you handle result value, uh, error values correctly. So you'll say something like this. Do output, oops, open brace, there we go. Output equals try result dot get. Give me the success value from here if you can, otherwise throw an error. And this is where you'd have your catch uh, here. And, you know, it, it, an error has occurred. It's basically the same error you'd have had anyway. So you might just print download error, for example, uh, like we had before in our previous uh, downloading code. Alternatively, you can switch on the result and write code to check for both the success and failure cases. Now, each of these have values inside them. In this case, the success value has a string inside, the error value has the actual error inside it. Um, so we can actually read those values out with a specially crafted switch statement. And this word syntax is a bit unusual. It's not result specific, it actually applies to all kinds of enums, um, but it, it, it's used here for the first time in the course. <clears throat> so we'll say switch, uh, switch result case dot success, let stir output equals stir case dot failure let error uh, output equals download error like that so we're saying if result is a dot success value if it worked correctly then there will be a value inside our string we got from our, our message here this thing here give me that please as stir and i can assign it here to output. But if our result failed, if it's a failure case, it'll obtain the error that happened, give me that, so I can use it in here. We could have said something like uh, error.localized inscription, for example, to use it here. So it'll be either success, it worked, or failure, it did not work. Both cases will say, okay, here's what you got back when it succeeded, or here's what it got back as an error. Regardless of how you actually use the result type, the advantage is it lets us store the whole success or the failure in the same value. And only one can be true, like an optional. It can't have a value and, ha and not have a value, right? It either does or doesn't have a value. It's the same thing here. It either has success or has a failure inside it. But it's in one single piece of data, which we can then store the property or pass it around or uh, read the error only when we're ready.